गाइज वट्स अप थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वॉचिंग मोस्टली सेन एम प्राजिता वेलकम बैक टू अर रियल टॉक ट्यूजडे वीडियो आई एम नॉट ए मुंबई आई एम इन न्यू यॉर्क फॉर दिस वन आफ काम यू ऑफ अ गोल कीपर्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू आई एम टेल यू मोर अबाउट इट इन अ व्लॉग दैट आई एम शूटिंग थ्रू आउट दिस होल ट्रिप ऑफ माइंड बट दिस वन इज अ वेरी स्पेशल रियल टॉक ट्यूजडे वीडियो बिकॉज आई हैव एन अपॉर्चुनिटी सिद विथ मिलिंडा फ्रेंच गेट्स एंड हैव अ कॉन्वर्जेशन विथ हर अबाउट गोल कीपर्स अबाउट एवरी थिंग शी डज एंड आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी हाई मिलिंडा थैंक यू सो गॉड वी कैन डू दिस आई एम सो हैप्पी वी जस्ट talking about how we are kind of over zoom i mean i believe if this had happened a few months ago it would be over zoom mm. and that would have just been sad yeah it's just nice to be back it's in person so together so nice to be right. how have you been doing you know i've done well during the pandemic i've been incredibly lucky right yeah. um but it's you know i think it was a hard time for a lot of people and um i'm glad to finally be back to be able to travel a bit more again same i'm so back do you, do you kind of also get a little bit nervous now that you travel after so long did that happen to you when you took your first when trip? i took my first trip so my first First big trip for the foundation was actually to Africa, back to the continent, and I oh, hadn't wow. been there since 2019. Yeah. And yeah, just a little bit of almost social anxiety. Right? Like, can, I, can I do this? Can I meet these people? Yeah. What do you say? Do you yeah. shake hands? Do you do your elbow? Yeah, all yeah. of that. But I was so nervous when I took my first flight out. I started shooting for a film that I was doing in 2019. Oh, 2020, and I remember getting on the flight, and I was just suddenly so nervous. I never had anxiety flying, mm. and I was like, "Wow, a lot has changed. Lot's uh, changed." But having said that, a lot of good things happened as well. Like you said, the foundation's back. So, uh, just to tell my viewers a little bit about what Goalkeepers is and what we are doing here. Yeah, so Goalkeepers um, really marks the progress of these goals that the UN set back in 2015, and these goals are to measure how is the world doing on things like. gender equality or ending childhood death. So goalkeepers are the group that helps us measure those goals and highlight the goals and how we're doing. So Melin I want to mm. know you uh, work very closely for uh, gender equality which is also something that's very very close mm. to my heart. I feel very grateful every time I get to work in that area for whatever little I can do with my region engagement. I want to ask you what is the one thing that we are lacking at the most right now when it comes to gender equality in the world. We're lacking women having true power in the world. And what do I mean by that? I mean being able to control resources, being able to take any decision that they want and setting policy for society. If women can have their full power or when they do, it trickles down and it changes yes. everything in society, but we're just not even close to being there yet. Yeah, can I give you a small example from sure. my life? Um so I did the show called Mismatched uh, on Netflix season 2 of which comes out very soon. I remember when that show was pitched to me, uh, I was so used to getting character briefs that were about the way the character looks. Mm. You know, after a really long time I read a female character that had nothing to do with the way she looks. Uh it had to do with the way she is that she's a gamer and she's dedicated and she's competitive. And I remember feeling it was such a happy change and I was like this is like a breath of fresh and then I realized that a major chunk of the writers were women. Mm -hmm. Gazal is a, a woman who uh does great work uh in the queer community but also a fabulous writer. And that's when I realized that oh that's how the narrative has changed. We got more women directors, we've got more women writers coming up on OTTs. So I guess that's what you mean when you say power versus is empowerment right because they're at the table they're writing the scripts and they're writing society as they see it so yeah. they don't just see beautiful yeah. women they see women doing incredible things in yeah. society the so women told by women for sure absolutely so if it was i mean a lot of my audience is young and uh, a lot of them are very passionate about mm. working towards the sdgs i want to know i want to ask you if there was one advice you would want to give them as to how they can take their first step towards working especially for gender equality what could it be I would say join a movement. Mm -hmm. Anything that's creating change in your country or another country where it's really helping people women advance in any field whether it's media, whether it's technology, whether it's more women in parliament, join a movement. And then I would say if you have $20, go or the equivalent of $20 Go on the internet and buy a set of chicks like through Heifer International for a woman because if she has if she lives somewhere in a low income country and she has a small flock of chicks guess what they grow up into chickens and they produce eggs she can sell them on their market and they're protein for her family so i would say do two things join a movement and then also give $20 somewhere and just start and start seeing what it does and what how it changes things for women you've been doing so much great work for so many years now and this is something that also comes to one of my viewers but i also want to ask this um um to you how do you deal with compassion fatigue mm. is that is that real 
Mm. Does that happen? How do you deal with it? Mm, for me personally or for people in general? I, I'd like to know both. Okay. <laughs> so for me uh, in person, it's I don't think I ever end up with compassion fatigue. I think it's more that when I'm out traveling, particularly in low-income settings, I see the great need mm -hmm. and sometimes it overwhelms me. And so I just have to take, you know, a day or sometimes two to myself. You know, I need to go out for a good jog, clear my head, and then take time. I sit, take time and quiet to, to journal and remember what it is I've seen. And for other people, I would say, look, if you have compassion fatigue, Think about whether you just need a little time away from the issue or whether you want to switch and work in a different field. There's so much need in the world. And I think, you know, it's not that we are act, we, we're acted to move out of compassion, but remember that change takes time and takes time for societal change. But what you are doing is changing the world. And you have to remember that. And sometimes even what you're doing, even if you're helping lift up one or two women, you're actually starting to change their community and their economy. And these are hard problems. Yeah. Um, Gates Foundation has been doing such great work back in India. And I'm very, very happy to be a part of it now. Uh, it's great to be a part of a platform that is kind of making impact consistently for so many years now. I want to ask you again another thing that's coming from one of my viewers. I want to ask you, what is the one advice you would give to young people, especially in India, uh, to work towards any of the SDGs or bring whatever little change that they can. I would say to anyone in India, you know, your country is making progress. You may not feel it every single day. Work on the gender issues. Yeah. You know, women, more women should be in the workforce in India. Yeah. And I think more women would like to work from what I hear. Yeah. I remember when I was here for Goalkeepers last year, one of the awardees at Goalkeepers, I am extremely sorry for not remembering her name, which I totally should. I'm going to add it on the screen. I'm going to Google it and then kind of... Um, she's this young girl from one of the uh, towns in India who actually worked actively towards eradicating child marriage completely mm -hmm. from her community. And I remember sitting uh, at awards night in 2019 and just looking at it and I was just like, why are these stories not told louder? You know, why are these stories not published in bold, fat letters? I mean, why didn't I, I'm from India and I did not know about mm. this. Um, so which is why I think a place like Goalkeepers is very, very special for me. Mm. It inspires me in a lot of different ways. I mean, Nikhil Taneja and I, we were talking about, he's, he was on the advisory board, he's still around. And I remember us discussing the exact same thing last night. So I want to thank you for uh, running Goalkeepers and making all of us a part of it from across the world. Well, thank you for being part of it. And one of the people we're honoring, as you know tonight, is from India, yes. Dr. Radhika. Yes. And what she's doing to try and eliminate blindness in India, but not just there, she's been so successful, she's now moved it to Kenya and other places. So it's fantastic to be able to highlight what your generation is doing to create change. We are very, very happy to be here, and it's a collab that we are living for. Thank you, Melinda. This was very, very insightful. Thanks I really, for really having appreciate me. that you took the time out. Okay, that was it. I honestly cannot tell you. I mean, the, the, the night has just started. I cannot wait to meet everyone that I'm going to meet. I mean, my, my the start has been optimistic <laughs> <laughs> for the night. Uh, but yeah, it's great to be here. You'll know more about uh, goalkeepers and everything that they're doing through my vlog and through my YouTube channel over the next few months. I'm going to say bye to you now. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again soon. Until we meet, love, love.